The Pleistocene epoch spanned from 2.6 million years ago until 11,700 years ago. It was characterized by a series of glacial and interglacial periods, ending in the last ice age which spelled the end of the Pleistocene and the beginning of the Holocene, in which we are living today. The Pleistocene fauna was most notably larger than today's animals. The most recognizable included the woolly mammoths, the saber-toothed cats, cave lions, and dire wolves. But which of these animals roamed Eurasia? If you took a step back, what could you expect to see on a safari in Pleistocene Eurasia? Some animals would be familiar and wouldn't look entirely out of place. For example, wolves were much more widespread across Eurasia during the Pleistocene, and animals like bears were also common, although these would likely have been cave bears. Similar in appearance to today's brown bears, the cave bears had a stout body and a broad, domed skull. They ate more of an herbivorous diet than European brown bears, but there is evidence on carcasses that they scavenged meat occasionally. They inhabited forested terrain, living in limestone caves. They appeared to adapt to the fluctuating climate of the Pleistocene, becoming larger during the glacial periods and smaller during interglacials, a way of adjusting heat loss to the changing conditions. Competition with humans for resources may have led to the cave bear's extinction 24,000 years ago. The European Dole a relative of today's dole, a canid, lived during Pleistocene Europe and Asia. It was larger than today's species, similar in size to a gray wolf. However, whilst the wolf grew larger during the Pleistocene, the dole grew smaller so that there was less competition. They hunted in forests, across highlands, and on mountains. The giant short-faced hyena became one of the most dominant and successful predators of Pleistocene Europe, similar in size to a lioness. It was the largest known hyena to have lived until its extinction 500,000 years ago. Despite their success throughout the continent, there is little fossil evidence of them after the early to middle Pleistocene. They dispersed out of Africa around 2 million years ago, but were replaced by the more successful and adaptable spotted hyena, a known species throughout sub-Saharan Africa today. But the giant short-faced hyena wasn't the only hyena to inhabit Eurasia all those years ago. Perhaps more famous was the cave hyena. This was a subspecies of the spotted hyena. It was more robust and had a thicker frame than its modern-day equivalents. It adapted to its diet according to the climate, becoming a more active hunter during glacial periods when regular calorie-dense food was essential for survival. They would have taken down wild horses, steppe bison, and woolly rhinos to name a few. But there is also evidence that they stole kills from Neanderthals, living up to the scavenging reputation their descendants would develop. Their size also changed in response to the environment. During the glacial periods, they were generally larger, but when the ice receded, they became smaller in body size. They dominated during the middle to late Pleistocene, becoming widespread from Europe to Southeast Asia. Early humans wouldn't have only had to avoid predation by the likes of hyenas, but also cave lions and the scimitar-toothed cat, Homotherium. These two predators would have competed for food across Pleistocene Eurasia. Homotherium was smaller than the lion, with a smaller body mass and front paw muscle strength. They also had reduced claws, all of which meant they couldn't take down large prey like the lions. They hunted better in open habitats, but could have been pushed out by the more dominant lions, as well as the cave lion modern lions, or Panthera leo, also inhabited parts of southern Europe during the Pleistocene, adding yet another predator to the mix. Twice the size of today's cheetahs was the giant cheetah. It spanned western Europe to China, living from the Pliocene to the middle Pleistocene. Some suggest that these cats lived like modern cheetahs, hunting down their prey and suffocating them before tucking into the carcass. Others have suggested that they hunted more like pantherine cats, attacking from behind and killing prey with a single bite to the back of the neck. Straight tusked elephants wandered in herds throughout Western Asia and Europe, dying out around 300,000 years ago. They were the largest known proboscideans, with males reaching a shoulder height of just over 4 meters or 14 feet and weighing up to 15 tons. During interglacial periods when the ice retreated, their northern range was extended as far north as Great Britain. They possessed a large crest on the top of their head to hold the weight of the head, which was thought to be the largest amongst all elephants. Their social structures were thought to have been similar to today's elephants, living in matriarchal herds, and adult males largely living a life of solitude. During the wetter months, they grazed grasses, and during the drier seasons, they mostly browsed trees, shrubs, and bushes. 
It is believed that these giants were both hunted and scavenged by early humans as well as Neanderthals. Their demise is likely due to unfavorable climatic conditions, which occurred around 115,000 years ago, rather than over hunting by humans. Scientists believe their loss from the landscape severely impacted the biodiversity across Europe. Like modern elephants, they were a keystone species, their very existence impacting the lives of many other species and shaping the ecosystem in which they lived. Interestingly, Although the straight tusked elephants were enormous, their descendants were the dwarf elephants that inhabited many of the Mediterranean islands. Other giants seen throughout Eurasia during the Pleistocene were the mastodons. These diverged from the lineage that became modern-day elephants 25 million years ago. They were typically browsers consuming spruce needles, pine cones, grass, and vine leaves. Although they are often depicted as being hairy, there is little scientific evidence of this. Whilst they were not much taller than modern elephants, they were considerably bigger in terms of weight and robustness, weighing up to 10 tons. They became extinct in Eurasia by the beginning of the Pleistocene, but the American mastodon survived much later. The woolly rhino, perhaps less well known than the woolly mammoth, was hunted by early humans across Eurasia. Their bodies were covered in long, thick fur to help them survive the icy cold of the frozen steppe. Due to their size, the woolly rhinos had few predators but youngsters could be taken by cave lions and hyenas. They mostly grazed grasses and sedges, living mainly in the lowlands and along plateaus. They became extinct from Europe around 15,000 years ago, but a small population survived in Siberia for another thousand years. As the climate warmed and precipitation increased, the grasses and sedges of the lowlands were largely replaced by shrubs and bushes, reducing the woolly rhino's diet climate change fragmented the populations, ultimately leading to their demise. But they weren't the only rhino species that would have been spotted on a Pleistocene safari. The interglacial rhinoceros genus Stephanorhinus was a two-horned rhino roaming much of Eurasia, particularly continental Europe. They were also native to North Africa. There were two species, Merck's rhinoceros and the narrow-nosed rhinoceros. They weighed between 1.5 and 3 tons, and the species adapted to the habitats available to them during the Pleistocene. The species alternated between browsing and grazing, giving them more flexibility when climate change altered the vegetation available. With tusks up to 15 feet long, the woolly mammoths were probably the most iconic species of the Pleistocene. Their genus first appeared in Africa around 5 million years ago, before they dispersed into Eurasia. They thrived during the ice ages of the Pleistocene. But as the era came to an end and the climate warmed, their numbers began to decline. Entering the Holocene, their remaining numbers were hunted by humans and they became extinct in Eurasia. A small population remained on Wrangell Island until 4,000 to 2,000 years ago before being hunted to extinction. Amazingly, Eurasia was also once home to hippos, which dispersed from Africa around 6 million years ago. They were Hippopotamus antiquus a different species from today's African hippos, and about twice the size. They mostly ate aquatic plants, unlike their modern counterparts who primarily graze terrestrial grasses. They disappeared from Europe during the Middle Pleistocene. One prey species that was found throughout Eurasia from Ireland to Siberia was the giant deer, or Megaloceros giganteus. Some scientists believe that these giant deer succumbed to starvation during the most recent ice age but their fossils in Siberia have been dated back to just 7,000 years ago, long past the Ice Age. An aquatic animal found in Europe, specifically Sardinia, was Megalon hydrus, a giant otter. Some scientists say that it was 10 feet long, and it has been depicted killing a hammerhead shark. However, although the tail was flattened somewhat to power it through the water at considerable speed, it likely ate crustaceans and bottom-dwelling fish, owing to its adapted claws. Although the woolly mammoth survived until relatively recently, and the descendants of many animals from the Pleistocene are still alive today, another species that is now extinct made it into modern times. Sandwiched between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea around modern-day Georgia is an isthmus of land known as the Caucasus. Once the Caspian tiger roamed this land, this tiger's fur was brighter in appearance than Siberian tigers with narrower black stripes. Wild pigs, deer, mountain sheep, onagers, and wild horses would have formed the bulk of their diet. It was thought to have been connected to the Bengal tiger population during the Pleistocene, 
but as the world entered the Holocene, despite surviving the changing climate, it was humans who hunted them to extinction and destroyed their habitats to make way for agriculture. They survived in the region until modern times with various sightings as recently as the 1950s, and even one claim of a female with cubs in Kazakhstan in 2006. That's all for today. We hope you've enjoyed your safari through Pleistocene Eurasia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.